Good morning, everyone. So my name is Julia Marino. As Cindy say, I'm an extension specialist in Orchard System. I work with the multiple aspects of Orchard System, including irrigation. And uh, today we're going to speak about uh, uh, irrigation in olive orchard system. So irrigation is an extremely important management practices in orchard system because it's highly correlated to multiple productive parameters. So it's essential for having good production, good yield, and so good income. Uh, Don't doing a good irrigation management can impact yield and other parameter of health of the system strongly. Uh, is it so important because it affects mainly all the physiological and productive process of a tree? Uh, fruit number and fruit size, because it supports growth so of the fruit, but also all the vegetative part of the tree. So your growth of the tree can be influenced by irrigation, oil content, and also oil extraction and oil quality. Uh, you can see that some of these aspects are in blue and some are in red in the slide. And the reason is that in olive, some process like fruit number and fruit size are positively affected by irrigation. But some other, like oil quality, need some kind of reduction of water, or let's say can be negatively affected by extra or exaggerated irrigation. So this makes the irrigation management of olive particular because they're more complicated, because you have to able you have to be able to manage irrigation well and also to manage stress well. So when we speak about stress and we speak about irrigation, we have to consider that the tree can be in different stages. It can be well irrigated. So basically you're giving to the trees all the water that, that they need, or it can be stressed. And you can have different level of stress. You can have a positive level of stress or a detrimental level of stress. Uh, so in this presentation, I'm gonna uh, discuss how to uh, decide how much water they need, the trees or the orchard need, and how to make sure that you're applying enough water to put them in full hydration or well hydrated condition. And now, and also how we can measure the stress and use this measurement of stress to apply water reduction for some productive objective. Um, when let's say that we have an orchard with full without any restriction of water in the soil, so the orchard can have all the water that it doesn't have any like limitation in the water uptake from the root to the leaves. Um, at this point, it is water with time is going to be there. You, there is not any other input of water. This water is going to be lost by the tree by the transpiration process. So it's the water got, that get uptaken by the roots and lost through the leaves or can evaporate from the soil. So the sum of these two processes is what we call evapotranspiration. And the evapotranspiration eventually, like if you don't put any water in the soil, will reduce the water amount of, uh, in the soil after one week and after two weeks more until we arrive at a step or at a moment when the tree cannot take water anymore or makes the F has to make more effort to take this water up. And this is when you need to refill the water in the soil. This is what we call allowable deple depletion. It means the tree gets stressed at the level of soil water content. And the objective at this point of the irrigation system of an irrigator is to refill that water. So basically when we irrigate, what we do is that we refill or we replace the water that has been used in the past period. If we don't calculate well how much water was used, we're gonna put more water and this is gonna be just lost by runoff or leaching, making your irrigation less efficient, but can also affect uh, tree's health. Because uh, um, Rich said this before, you can, it's difficult to, to kill a tree, like a, an olive tree is reducing water, but it's very easy to harm the trees with over irrigation. So this is why it's so important to make sure that you know how much water you can apply to your orchard. Um, calculating the evapotranspiration is uh, relatively relatively easy because you need two main parameters. One is the reference evapotranspiration, this ET0, and the other is the crop coefficient. Um, reference evapotranspiration is basically a measure of a, how, how much hot and dry is an environment. So the concept is like if you put some water outside in a hot day um, in August, that water is going to evaporate faster than if you put it in a, like a April day, very humid. Uh, so the, 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 the reference evapotranspiration takes into account the environment. 
while the crop coefficient takes into account the crop specific. So we're going to have crop coefficient for each species. For example, the crop coefficient of the olive will be very different from the crop coefficient of the almond because the almond uses more water than the olive and so on. The reference of photospiration is easy to, 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 to obtain because it's provided by public services. In case of California, it's the CIMIS um, network. So you just need to go online, sign in the CIMIS, and you can find the, the uh, meteorological station that is close to your orchard. And uh, the, basically, they place this meteorological station, like this one on the right, through all the California. And this measure how much water is evapotranspired by a grass surface, like the one in the picture. Uh, so this data is easy to um, achieve, like in the internet, you can have like monthly data, you can have weekly data, depending on what is your irrigation scheduling. Uh, the crop coefficient is developed by a researcher. Okay, and this is basically a number that you use to multiply, multiply the AT reference by the crop coefficient. So here I'm showing the crop coefficient that is suggested in California for uh, um, olive oil orchard. For a table olive orchard, that will be 0 0.75. Um, we use this type of crop coefficient uh, is a simplification. Uh, not so. This is this method is a simplification of management. So, like, of course, each orchard is gonna transpire a little bit differently, and like the things can change from one month to the other. But it's like a useful way to quantify how much water your orchard is gonna use. Is not the only way to cannot be the only method used in the in for your irrigation scheduling. So we will see this later, but you need to use this, calculate how much water you need, and then go in your orchard and check that you're doing right. Okay, because it's like a simplification method. However, the method is very easy and practical. So you have your reference T, for example, in July are 8.7 inches. So you multiply by your crop coefficient, 0 0.65, and you have your ET. So olive in July uses more or less five, 5.6 inches of water through the, through the month. And then you can divide and have like the daily amount of water, 0 0.18 inches, or you can calculate it in by a weekly basis. That really depends on your, on your irrigation management, how, how often do you irrigate, which depends on your soil, but we're not gonna enter into all these details. As you can see, the water use of the olive is like about like it goes in, in, in April when in general you start irrigation here in April is three inches, then you go to four, five, you keep to five inches by, per month in June, July, August, and then it decreases three and two. Uh, overall, uh, considering just the growing season, more or less, we, we believe that 25 inches are needed. Uh, don't consider in January, February, and March where you we don't irrigate, and same in November and December. So more or less 25 inches of water are needed to irrigate an olive through the season, full irrigation. Now that we consider like the full irrigation, we want to start to think and to speak about water stress. Um, when you stress a tree, you're going to have some consequences. If you arrive to this, this is a visual consequence of a water stress. A water stress olive orchard, you will see this like shriveling in the olive. And you can see that the leaves get like a kind of a, they bend their border, their margin to protect themselves uh, from excesses, excessive water loss. So if you see this, you apply too much stress. When you arrive to see the symptom of a water stress, you already overpass the level that is uh, good for a profitable yield. Um, the same is on the other side. This is an example of an over-irrigated trees. And the, that by the time you've seen this, the damage is already done. And the, uh, the, 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 um, I wanted to show this because this, uh, this was appeared several months after the moment of over-irrigation. Um, what happened in between the moment when a tree is fully irrigated and the moment when we arrive to this extreme uh, symptom of stress. There are several other factors that cannot be seen that are happening uh, uh, physiologically. So we have to go a little bit uh, on the basis of uh, like why we irrigate. So this is a surface of a leaf and this hole are what we call stomata. This is basically the, uh, the these are the doors from which the water goes out of, of the leaves, what, what we call before transpiration, right? Um, when we irrigate, the stomata keep open. So we lose water through the leaves. And we have this ET that we discussed before. 
Now, if the water, uh, if there is not enough water in the soil and the tree gets stressed, a signal is sent and these tomatoes are closed. Why they do it? Because they don't want to lose water, because they don't want to uh, dehydrate. So they are protecting them, the leaves and the system from the excessive dehydration. However, from these tomata, from these holes, there is also another important process that is happening. This means that the, the water is going out, but there also the CO2 is entering and the CO2 is used by the leaves to make photosynthesis. This means that if we stress the plant and the stomata close, we don't make photosynthesis. Since the photosynthesis produces the sugars that are the food of the plants needed to grow, basically like if we don't irrigate it, we're gonna affect growth. When we speak about growth, this means growth of fruits and growth of shoots, any type of growth. Um, of course, fruits are your yield for this year. So if you stress the trees, you're gonna have smaller fruits, you can have fruit or drops, and so you're gonna have less yield this year. But if you stress the trees when there is like shoot development of shoot growth, and then we know that in the shoot there are in the axis of the of the leaves in the shoots there are the buds that are next year production. So if you stress the tree this year, you are also affecting next year production. And we saw this in the presentation of Elizabeth and of Luis, um, how this double growth happen and how next year production is is built this year through growth. So fortunately, this process happen in different time uh, or. They kind of like have a different timing through the season, but irrigation um, stress due to um, water stress associated to bad management of irrigation can affect your yield for multiple years. Uh, this is an experiment that was done by Steve Grattan and uh, other other author in California. They basically applied what we call sustained deficit irrigation. Um, this means that the water uh, with, with the calculated AT, uh, they apply less water. For example, the need of an olive is 25 inches, and also they apply like 80% uh, of this. Uh, and in another, in another group of plants, they apply 50%, and they measure yield. Um, so you can see that um, in this graph on the left, basically full 100% full, uh, ET corresponded to 100% yield. And for example, when we go to 40% ET, the yield reduction was strong and the yield was reduced by 40%. So it was just 60% of potential yield. Um, however, what it is interesting is that in the right side of the, the graph on the right, um, that shows the oil yield, not the fruit yield. The reduction in yield was less than the reduction of fruit yield. You can see that you have full yield with just 80% of it. The blue line, the blue dotted line, and the, for the forty percent, when you apply just forty percent of ET, the the yield was almost eighty percent of the maximum. With respect to the other graphs that consider the fruits, that uh, has a bigger reduction, the yield was sixty percent. So the reason is that some stress can improve uh, oil content of the of the fruits. And you can see this is the same studies and you can see this in the graph in the left. Basically the irrigation at the highest irrigation where they apply 600 millimeters, they had like a way smaller oil content, just five, 10% with respect to the lowest irrigation treatment where they had 20% of oil content in the fruits. This is associated to a strong effect that irrigation has on the oil content, but also an extra, how much oil is extracted from the fruit at the processing. So this is one of the positive effects that irrigation can have that we discussed at the beginning. So deficit irrigation, well-managed and well-controlled can improve your oil extraction. It can also improve some parameters that are associated to quality, for example, the polyphenol. And you can see this irrigation where the, when only 16% of ET was applied, the polyphenol content of the oil was way higher than when 83% of water was applied. Now, based on this study, they found that 40% of irrigation was the best um, amount of water to apply if you want to maximize quality. Of, of course, this implies a reduction in yield, and we saw it. But depending on the objective that you have, like this can be something considered. 
And if you go to 80%, you shouldn't have any uh, reduction in oil production and an improvement of quality. And so in that range between 40 and 80, you can move like your, your decision if you decide to apply sustained deficit irrigation, uh, knowing however that below 80, your yield is gonna be reduced. Uh, another technique is the what we call the regulated deficit irrigation. Um, this implies not apply the deficit through all the season, but just focus on some phenological stages that are um, can give you a better like uh, outcome. Phenology means like is like associated to the change that happen in the trees, fruit, and and shoots through the season. So whatever you can see um, through the season, for example, shoot growth. Uh, fruit growth and so on. Um, this graph shows the phenological process that happen in olive through the season and divided this stage in sensitive when you have the S in the bottom. So you want to apply good water in that period. You don't want to stress the trees or tolerant when you have the tip at the blue at the bottom. So for example, all the period of vegetative growth and uh, flower development at the beginning of the season that happened from late May until uh, uh, late March, um, April and May is extremely sensitive to drought. So you don't want to stress the trees in that period. Also this period that is in June, that is the beginning of fruit growth is sensitive and you want to support the growth of the fruit in that period with good irrigation. And later on, in July and mid-August, there is a period that is tolerant, and this is when peat hardening is happening. The fruit is not growing a lot, and there is still not happening the peak of oil accumulation. So you can stress the trees in this period. However, you want to make sure that then you rewater them in the stage three, that is like between mid-August and September, because this is when your oil accumulation is happening. So to achieve maximum fruit size, if you do deficit, in July, then in August, you want to rehydrate. And then another tolerant stage is the stage that is between like in pre-harvest, let's say October and November, uh, where water can be reduced again without impacting yield, but having this positive effect in oil extraction. Um, how to measure the stress, how much stress, stress we can apply. Um, here is where we have to introduce this instrument that is called the pressure chamber. Basically, it's like is a is a, a tool that can al allow you like in a simple way to measure how much stress you are applying and what is the water status of the tree. It works very sim it's very simple. You just put like the leaves inside a bag and you place it inside this chamber. You apply a pressure and at one point you're gonna see some water going out of the patio, as you can see here in the top. When the water goes out of the petiole, it basically you, you extracted the water from the leaves and you have one measurement of what we call stem water potential. It's very easy. The more pressure you have to put to, to extract the water, the more the trees are stressed. Basically the tree, if they have less water, they hold it with more strength. So with this measurement, basically you can just put the leaves in the chamber, as you can see, read and have these values that tells us if you have to irrigate or not, depending on the period. So we're gonna go and see this in detail with the stage that we discussed before. We already say that this is a sensitive period. So based on our measurement of stem water potential, we go to the field, we make the measurement on a group of trees and we see that our stem water potential is one megapascal. So we are good. This is what we want to have to have a maximized growth. If you go down to minus 1.2, or 1.3, you are still good, but you're gonna have some kind of like growth reduction. This can be something that you want to apply if your orchard is growing too much. But if you're approaching minus two, you're gonna have a strong reduction in growth. So do you see, this is a very simple way to quantify if you're doing right with irrigation. And it's very difficult to, to do it with other type of tools. Um, flower development, similar, you want to keep the irrigation about minus, minus one megapascal to have maximum flower development. And for the period of fruit growth here at the beginning around June, similar things. Minus one bar megapascal is a good threshold. If you go like around minus two, you're gonna have a little bit of effect and minus three strong effect on fruit size at harvest. You cannot recover the stress that you apply in this period. We say that pit hardening is a very resistant period. The stress can be applied during pit hardening that is start at the beginning of July, around 7 of July until mid-August. 
you can reduce water strongly up to minus three bar megapascal. You, you're safe there. You're gonna have fruit drops if you overpass this level of minus three megapascal. But until there, you're safe to go. You can reduce water, you can save water and can have also some positive effect on, 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 yield, on um, quality. Um, and then we have this other period that we say that if you apply the deficit of feed hardening, you want to rehydrate the, the trees of the period of, uh, for, of second period of fruit growth that is between mid-August and mid-September. Your stem water potential should be around minus 1.5 megapascal. Um, while when you arrive to the pre-harvest stage, you can reduce water and staying in a, in a stage that is like between minus two and uh, minus three, like the more you decrease from minus two to minus three megapascal, the more you're gonna increase the polyphenol contact of your, of your um, uh, oil and the oil extractability. Um, what are the takeaway, take home message from this presentation? So olive is like a very strong um, species. It can really resist to drought. However, precise irrigation is fundamental to maximize productivity. Uh, your goal should be to provide the right amount of water. And this is where you calculated the ET and at the right time. This is when you have to consider your phenology. And then the amount will depend also on your objective. If it's yield or quality, then you can manage as we see, uh, we saw a little bit differently. Um, olive is sensitive to water stress at the beginning of the season, when you have like the flower production and, de and development, where you have like a shoot growth and the beginning of fruit growth. Is, uh, uh, is resistant during pit hardening in uh, July and beginning of August. Total water use is about 25 inches, is way less than most of the other crop used, so it's a very sustainable crop in case of water scarcity. Uh, irrigation to match ET, that is evapotranspiration, allow to obtain maximum fruit yield, but not necessary maximum oil yield and quality. Um, orchard water use is site specific and time specific. So you calculate your ET, but you cannot rely on your this for a precise water management. So you want to check other uh, indicators that you're doing well in the field. Um, this indicator include can be, I didn't touch on this soil moisturing, moisture monitoring. This can be done is a useful tool, but uh, for me can be very variable, like depending on where you put your sensors, sensor are expensive, like soil changes strongly between one location and the other. So it's a useful tool, but uh, um, it can have like have uh, some limitation um, in terms of reliability. Stem water potential is highly reliable and good. We have very good guidelines for olive to manage irrigation precisely, particularly if you want to apply stress, you need to take measurement of the plum water status. However, it's labor intensive and uh, this is like um, something like uh, that, that is a, the main limitation of adoption of stem water potential in general is like the time needed uh, to take the measurement. Um, it has to be done at midday. Um, which is also another negative factor. There are some uh, studies that are testing some continuous monitoring sensor. There are like dendrometers. So there are like other sensors that can measure water, some physiological parameter continuously. But the state of the art at this moment is that the, the, they are expensive, but they are difficult to interpret. Uh, so, so far, the adoption has been a little bit limited by these uh, two factors. Um, we discussed that the sustained deficit irrigation can help to save water and sustain yield, but the water stress has to be avoided specifically at the beginning of the growing season. Uh, on the other side, we have the regulated deficit irrigation that uh, can be done during some stress tolerance stages that we saw are the, basically the pit hardening and in pre-harvest, those are the two most common. And this can uh, help and is very useful to achieve specifically objective of, uh, of oil quality and uh, resulting in more profitable crop and less water use. And this is, with this I want to thank Cindy for organizing this and the, the huge amount of people that are involved in some project that I'm doing with the Olive is like a huge team spread through all California and uh, the Olive Oil Commission and the California Both Table and Olive Commission that supported uh, our research in the last two years.
Thank you, Julia. Um, we do have a couple minutes and you do have some questions. So I'll read you the until we're, we reach time, the questions. Is it true that olive trees have very shallow root systems, meaning they need more drip line irrigation, especially in summer? Oh, okay. the, the, the roots go where the water is. So basically like, uh, this is true, the super high density have like more shallow roots than for example, like a big, like large table olive orchard or like a traditional olive orchard. Uh, olive system, olive root system is made to go deep. If it doesn't go deep is because we just put the water right there. And so they keep in the surface. So yes, it is true, but this is not because the olive is like this. It's because the way we grow them, the way we basically, give them the water in that area, they don't have to make a lot of effort. Okay, the next question, what is the recommendation about decreasing irrigation prior to harvest? So um, this is a very uh, complicated topic. You don't want to have it too dry because this is gonna affect the extraction and you don't want to have it with uh, too much water because is gonna uh, reduce your extractability. Um, the recommendation is to keep, to try to check the stem water potential and make sure that it doesn't go below minus three megapascal. This is like more or less what we suggest in terms of like management. So the, the, the best way, you know, you close the irrigation and it depends on what soil you have, uh, how, how hot is the environment. The, the, the plants can get way more stress than what you can control. It's just, just giving a percentage of reduction in water is impossible because each site specific location would change. I've been doing experiment in some orchard in three days, the stem water potential was dropping strongly. And in other, after three weeks, there, nothing was happening because the soil was heavy and was holding water. So my suggestion is checking the stem water potential and make sure that you go, you don't keep it very wet. So it's not about one, 1 1.5. You go below two, but not lower than minus three. Okay.